got a few things to say tonight that need to be said, and so I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, get into it here and do what we need to do. Uh, I'm going to talk about the innocents that suffer tonight, the innocent ones. And uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to the book of uh, Joshua, chapter number 7, verse 24. Joshua 7, verse 24. Joshua chapter number 7, verse 24. Scripture says, It came to pass when Israel had made an end of slaying all the inhabitants of Ai in the field, in the wilderness, wherein they chased them, and when they were all fallen on the edge of the sword until they were consumed, that all the Israelites returned to Ai and smote it with the edge of the sword. And so it was that all that fell that day, both of men and women, were 12,000, even all the men of Ai. That's wonderful, isn't it? Don't you? You got a, you have a, uh, you have a, um, you have you have victory. Israel is in, uh, Israel is enjoying victory, and uh, that's uh, you know that's the kind of thing that uh, uh, you need victories. You need victories here and there, Amen. and uh, uh, I want you to go back to chapter number seven. Uh, Joshua chapter number 7 and then verse number 24 and Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons his daughters his oxen his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had and they brought them to the valley of Achor now Achan's not going to share in the victory and so Joshua said why hast thou troubled us the Lord shall trouble thee this day and all Israel stoned him with stones and they burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones, and they raised over him a great heap of stones to this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor to this day. Now Achan had done a terrible deed. He'd gone against the commandment of the Lord, fully knowing what he was doing, conscious of it. But his children made no choices. But his children paid dearly for what he did. You know, I live in a generation today, 2012, people that had been born in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, I was graduating from high school when these people were born. And they have completely turned this country upside down. And they have completely rejected their fathers and their grandfathers and their great-grandfathers, their culture, their country, everything. This is an arrogant, arrogant, smart-aleck generation. This is a know-it-all, me-first generation. And you need to be reminded of that. You need to understand because the pressure is so great. State Senator Stacy Canfield. Campfield, Canfield, whatever his name is. Uh, what's his name? Campfield. Uh, is uh, apparently a man of courage. And he said something about the origins of the HIV virus. Now, I may not necessarily agree with him on the origins of the HIV virus, but his application of it was very clear that it's a problem of the sodomite community and they brought it in on the people and a lot of innocent people have died because of it. Well, that doesn't fly, that doesn't go well with political correctness. And uh, you know, they've ostracized him. He was kicked out of some restaurant, woman wouldn't let him in. And, uh, and then the uh, newspaper, uh, the pundits here in the local paper, they had a, they had a lot to say about Mr. Campfield. Uh, but the bottom line is that um, if you'd been living in Knoxville, Tennessee in 1950, uh, Mr. Campfield wouldn't even had to do that. First of all, AIDS didn't exist. And secondly, if you had stood up in public and taken a position a pro-sodomite, they would tart and feathered you. They would have. They would have. Don't let this crowd of, uh, of, uh, of Satanists uh, intimidate you. You live, in a, you live in a mad, insane society, folks, and you need to be reminded because you're getting, it, you're getting a dose of it every day of your life. You're being brainwashed into accepting this stuff 
as, uh, because this generation has rejected the Bible. Amen. Now, you may not be aware of this, but 52 million little innocent children have died in this nation. 52 million. You say, well, how come we didn't hear about that, preacher? Oh, they're happening. It's happening every day. That's right. It's the political expediency of abortion. These little children were never questioned. Their rights were never considered. The fact that they're little human beings and that nobody, uh, nobody spoke for them, that's not an issue. If there ever was an innocent one, it's them. Amen. If I understand the shedding of innocent blood, if that's not the shedding of innocent blood, I don't know what is. If I knowingly support a murderer of babies, then that makes me culpable too. I did a little research. 52 million is a lot of numbers, folks. That's a big number. I did a little research, and here's what I discovered. I just tapped a few countries in. How many of you have ever heard of Scandinavia? You were talking about Sweden, Denmark, Norway. Well, I've got five countries, Sweden, Denmark, Holland, Norway, and Finland. Now, that's a good hunk of land. That's a lot of people. But the population of all those countries combined is about 39 million total. In plain words, more babies have been butchered in this country than populates all of those countries. All of Scandinavia and all of Holland, all of Finland, all those countries, Sweden, Denmark, Norway. Sweden's got 9 million people, Denmark 5,200,000, Holland's got 16 million, Norway 4,920,000, Finland 5,375,000. A larger country next to them is Poland. They've got 38 million people. Germany's about 68 million, somewhere along in there. Uh, 52 million's a big number. Try to get that over. 52 million is a big, big number. And I got that from the uh, Christian Life Resources on the Internet. You can type it in. This is total abortions in America since 1973. 52,008,665. Of course, this was in the year 2010. That's two years ago. So Lord knows how many more have died since then. I looked at some statistics. And I know sometimes, you know, you can get bored with them. But let me give you a couple tonight. The birth rate for unmarried women in this nation is 41 percent. That's the whole birth rate. Some groups, it's 80 percent of all the children born are born out of wedlock. In 1965, that's the year after I graduated from high school, 65. I was 18 years old, 1965. 3.1 percent of white infants were born to single mothers. Three percent. Three percent. Now, guess what uh, kind of problems we had with homes and, and with crime and with broken families in 1965? We didn't have anything like we have now. It didn't exist. You understand where all these problems are coming from? They're coming from broken homes. Why are the homes breaking up? The homes are breaking up. I mean, if you have 41% of the children being born out of wedlock to so-called single moms and what have you, there's a problem there. Now, please understand me tonight. Don't get mad and have a knee-jerk reaction to what I'm saying. And this is the problem. Anytime you get up and start talking about something that's the truth and a reality, people just get mad and take it personally. This is why all the reverends in America never say anything except feel good sermons. You know, God loves you and he wants to bless you. And just come down here and let us lay hands on you and just bless you up a storm and just go out and do as you please. Isn't that the truth? Now I'm telling you the truth. Huh? Don't you get tired of it? Don't you just want to go out and puke somewhere? <laughs> I do. I mean, when you were children, at least back when I was, they'd take a belt to us. Or My grandfather said, you go tear your switch off. I said, Lord, have mercy help us. I have to get my own rod. <laughs> go tear off my own switch and bring it back to him. And that's what he wore me out with. 
I had to find a limber one somewhere or something. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd look for one that I didn't think was going to hurt too bad. <laughs> yeah, boy, but you know now that's child abuse. Let me, what, let me tell you what child abuse is, okay? You want me to tell you what child abuse is? It's letting your children smoke dope, shoot up drugs, pop pills, and, and run with cr a crowd that does and ruin their life for the rest of their lives. That's child abuse. And when the government intervenes and tells you that you can't discipline your children and raise them in the fear and the admonition of the, admonition of the Lord, they are complicit with it. Amen. That's child abuse. That's child abuse. Yes, sir. Child abuse is when two people come together that have been fed everything they ever wanted, every desire they ever had was heaped upon them, and they love themselves like you would not believe, and you try to make a marriage out of two people that are in love with themselves. It's not going to work. You've had two abused children. They've never been taught anything. They've never been taught any responsibility. Let me give you a fair warning tonight. Let me tell you something that will help you. I know in school everybody gets a reward and everybody gets a trophy and there's no real winners or no real losers and all of that. That's not the real world, folks. How many of you have been out here trying to find a job? Let me tell you what the real world is like. The real world is where that employer is looking for somebody that's going to do a job that he needs to get done and he'll pay you to do that job. But if you can't do that job, he'll hire somebody else. So you have to equip yourself and prepare yourself to be able to do a job. They lied to you in school. They lied to you. They lied to you. They abused you. They abused you mentally. That's the problem. The whole culture in our country, folks, is collapsing. And there's nobody going to stay it up. There's, there's nobody to stop it except the church. If the church will not tell you the truth, you're not going to get it anywhere. You're, believe me, you're not going to get it from the news media. They're politically correct. They can't. There's certain sacred cows in this nation. You don't kick those sacred cows. Campfield kicked one of the sacred cows in America. He kicked it, and he paid the price for it. That's one of the sacred cows. And so you're not going to get it from the news media. You're not going to get it from the educational establishment. You're certainly not going to get it from the government. And you're not going to get it from higher education. If you can't get the truth in the house of God, you're not going to get it. Amen. Now, Marriage after multiple marriage after multiple marriage. Here's some of the statistics on multiple marriages. I thought this was quite, quite revealing. It's quite a remarkable thing when I read this. Here's the divorce rate in America right now as it stands. 50% of first marriages end a divorce. 67% of second marriages end in divorce. And 74% of third marriages end in divorce. So what's happening? After you've been through that first one, it's easier to go through the second one. And then after the second one, it's easier to go through the third one. Seventy-three quarters of all third marriages end in divorce. Only a fourth of them make it. Only a fourth survive. That tells me that you ought to work hard on making your marriage Amen. succeed. Amen. <laughs> you ought to work at it. You ought to work at it. Because I'm going to speak up for the victims tonight. I'm going to speak up for the children. All right, you two, you two big adults, you, you, you know, you, I mean, you, you're, you're grown. You make your own decision. You decided to marry each other, okay? And then you had children. Well, those children didn't choose to be born the way they're born. They didn't choose the world they came into. They didn't choose the circumstances of their birth. They didn't choose that. But I'll guarantee you one thing. My experience has been that children pay a heavier price in a divorce than the divorcees do. They pay a heavier price. They pay a much heavier price. And why in the world the church won't speak out against that is beyond me. The churches are full of divorce counseling. That's all good. That's fine. That's all fine. But the truth of the matter is sometimes preventive medicine is good. A little preventive medicine. We used to do what's called preventive maintenance when I was a line mechanic. You know, what's that? We check the brakes, see if the wheel cylinder is leaking. See how far down the brake pads or the, wheels, or the, or the, or the, the, uh, or the brake shoes have worn. Uh, preventive maintenance is to check the ball joints. Make sure they're not going to pop out on you when you're going down the highway. Preventive maintenance is to check the compression on an engine. See if all the compressions are at least, at least within 10% of each cylinder. Preventive maintenance is to know what to look for in a car that may cause them big trouble down the road. 
That's preventive maintenance. Preventive maintenance is to adjust the valves on an engine. Keep the timing set on an engine. Keep the oil changed in that engine. And uh, that's the lifeblood of an engine. The oil is. The new oil filter. Keep that changed. That's preventive maintenance. So why do you think that if you're going to have a marriage, you, you shouldn't have preventive maintenance? You should work at your marriage. You should work at it. Marriage is ordained of God, folks, not the government. Not the government. Marriage is something that God ordained. And why did he do it? Because it's the only way you'll ever have a civil society. If you don't have marriage, you got the jungle. Without marriage is the jungle. The jungle. Without the home is the jungle. The Illuminati intends to destroy the homes of America. The Illuminati will destroy the homes of America, just like it'll destroy the homes of the rest of the world and turn them into to turn them into Ottomans that live for nothing but themselves and become slaves to the state. And that's exactly what's in the cooker. That's what's coming. And once again, I'm going to tell you this coming November is probably the most important election that this nation has ever had. God help us. If you go vote for Barack Obama and put him back in office, if you do that, you voted for the, uh, type into the internet, pull up Barack Obama's name, and type in his voting record on abortion. That's right. And you'll find that when he was a senator in Illinois, that Illinois tried to pass a law, and I don't know if they got it passed or not. The law was if you abort a baby and the baby happens to be alive, what do you do with it? Grab it by the throat and choke it to death, or do you try to save its life? If you abort that baby, and in other words, a live birth abortion, that's, an un, that's, that's, a, that's, a, uh, that's a, you know, that's a problem. <laughs> the idea was to kill the baby. But for some strange reason, the baby comes out and the baby's still alive. What do you do with it? Do you know what Obama voted to do? Kill it. Kill it. That's, right. That's what he voted to do. Kill it. Oh, I'm sure they use uh, uh, euphemisms like, uh, well, uh, leave it alone and let the nature take its course. Well, nature wasn't taking its course when you aborted it. That's right. It's obvious now tonight that every last one of you were not aborted. Raise your hand. You weren't aborted. How do you feel about it? If I ask all, if I run a survey tonight and ask all of you in this house, uh, you're glad you were born. How many you raise your hand and say, I'm glad I was born? Amen. Why don't they get a choice? These people, these crying liberals, these bleeding heart liberals, like to come across to you like they're concerned about the welfare of children. And like, uh, you know, like they, have, they, like they want to have compassion on, on, on the people, you know. And the welfare state that Lyndon Johnson created back in the 60s has created generation after generation of people that have lived on welfare. Their mother was on welfare. Their mother's mother was on welfare. And it just cycles itself over and over and over again. And they stay on welfare. That's where we are. Half the people in this country don't pay taxes. Do you want them voting? Think about it. Who would they vote for? Think about it. If a man doesn't pay income taxes, who do you think he's going to vote for? He's going to vote for a government that's going to take care of his nanny state that's going to take care of him. All right? You think a liberal has compassion if he kills a baby? For years, when I first came to this church a long time ago, I had on that bulletin board back there about eight or ten photographs of aborted babies. It stayed up there for a long time. How many of you remember that? That bothered me a long time ago. I used to preach about abortion all the time. I never could square it with somebody saying he's saved, that he's a Christian, that he loves the Lord, and you, you support abortion. No, 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 no. That's the killing of the unborn, and that's the killing of the innocent. And some of the methods of abortion are, are horrible. DNC is one. That's where you go in and pull out legs, and you pull out arms, and you pull out pieces, put them together, and see that you've got a whole child. All right? Then you've also what's called partial birth abortion. You pull a baby out, stick something in the back of its head, and kill it. All right. Then you've got the one where you shoot a saline solution in and burn it red. The little thing's red when it comes out. It gets burned up in the mother's womb. You don't like to think about stuff like that, do you? 
You don't, really. I mean, think about it. Think about it. Think, there's not a person in this house tonight, I do not believe there's anybody in this house tonight, that if you saw them killing babies, like that little baby back there, a little baby over here, if you saw them killing babies, you'd get upset about it. you try to stop it, right? I honestly believe that God Almighty is watching this nation, and this may be the crossover this coming November to whether or not He ever blesses it again or not. Really? 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 Now, there's two Republican candidates, one Newt Gingrich and the other one is, uh, uh, is uh, Mitt Romney. And then, of course, you have uh, Santorum and you've got Ron Paul. You've got four, but the two leaders are, are, uh, are uh, the two that I mentioned. And uh, both of them are anti-abortion. But, uh, uh, but Mitt Romney uh, was pro-abortion at one time, changed his position. Uh, uh, I said his name a minute ago, my mind's gone blank. Newt Gingrich has always been anti-abortion, pro-life, always has been. Well, these men are running for the Republican nomination for president. And one of them will get the nomination, one of them, one of those two men right there. It'll be one of those two. And this coming uh, November, they'll go up against Barack Obama. You ought to do some serious praying about your position when it comes to uh, killing of the unborn. You walk into a, a voting booth. I'm not talking about whether you're a Democrat or Republican. Newt Gingrich is saying things right now about the Republican Party, about the establishment of the Republican Party. They seem to be rejecting him. I rejected the Republican Party a long time ago because they've got some of the sorriest dogs that ever lived on the Republican Party. Yes, sir, believe me, I am not up here, I am not a cheerleader for the Republican Party, not at all, not at all, no way. I'm no cheerleader for the Republican Party. They used to stand for something a long time ago, but in a sense, they've gotten, uh, they've gotten pretty liberal on a lot of issues, and, and the Republican establishment is coming out against uh, Newt Gingrich. Why are they coming out against him? I listened to the man the other night, and he laid out about seven points, one right after another, exactly what he would do the very first day he was elected into the office. And the first thing he would do is stop Obamacare. Did you realize that this president has just recently, I don't know if he signed it into law or whatever's happened to the issue, but there is an issue with nonprofit organizations, with schools and what have you, that under Obamacare, they are going to have to pay for abortions. You realize that? You realize that? that? That people that aren't even Christians are saying that Obama has officially declared war on religion. Well, they're only seeing what he's been doing for a long time. I want to be as nice about it as I can, folks, but I'm trying to tell you something. You can't come into the church and sing, oh, how I love Jesus. And God give us revival and we want to see the power of God move in this house and then walk out and vote for somebody that kills babies. Amen. It just won't wash. Amen. It won't work. It won't work. And in the past 200 year history of this nation, pastors have stood in the pulpits and they have told their people and warned their people about what was coming and about what was out there and about the political, the, the field and all of that. I can't stand up here today and, and endorse Newt Gingrich and tell you everything about him is fine or Mitt Romney either. But I'll tell you one thing. I'll take the lesser of two evils, won't you? Amen. Amen. I'll take the lesser of two evils. Well, the Mormon religion is a religion to itself, and it, it's not really Christian, no. And he's been rejected by evangelical Christians. They're not supporting him, and that's basically the reason, because he's a Mormon. And, uh, for example, I don't know if you've ever been taught this or not, but Brigham Young had 50-something wives. Oh, I know it's against the law today. Back in the 1800s, though, he had 50-something wives. I've seen photographs of Brigham Young, and, of course, he was a Mormon. And some of the doctrines of the Mormon church are just absolutely wild and insane. But the truth of the matter is, 
The Mormon church doctrine was born by Joseph Smith in Elvira, New York, who literally got it from the Masonic Lodge and his association with that. Now that's a whole different study altogether, but that's the origin of all that stuff. Their temple is laid out like a Masonic temple. There's a lot involved in all of that. When we get into the elite that are really running the world, you're talking about the Illuminati and you're talking about high echelons of it. There's something going on. They're trying to get a one world government, folks, and they want to put their man in there. And for the appear, what it appears to me to be is that Newt Gingrich is, 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 is an outcast. He, he's not part of the establishment. And, and, if, and here's what, here, the way I see it, if the Republican establishment comes out against a man who is coming plainly telling you what he's going to do, that makes me suspect the Republican establishment. I got no use for the Democrat establishment. None. But that causes me to suspect the Republican establishment. The other man up there, uh, Santorum, appears to be a good Christian man. Says a lot of good things. Former senator from Pennsylvania. And then Ron Paul, if it wasn't for his, for his, uh, for his position on Iran and, 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 and foreign policy, Ron Paul says a lot of good things. Ron Paul is a, is a libertarian, essentially, and, is, and so is, his son certainly is, who's a senator up there in Kentucky. And uh, all of that, you know, but the bottom line is you do have choices. You do have choices. And, and you know, it's my responsibility. But I didn't do this in the last election, but this one I'm going to have to. I really am. And if a man falls out with me over that, just fall out with me over it. Because I'll tell you something, I don't want their blood on my hands. I don't want the blood of these babies on my hands. I don't like that stuff. If you're going to kill babies, count me out. You say they're not babies. Oh, they're not? What are they? When did you become a human? The, the same people who sit there and put up that legislation about, you know, abortion's okay are the same ones that are double-tongued and then they'll turn right around and say, oh, well, you killed a woman who was pregnant. Yes. We got a double. Yeah. Yes, they can't have it both ways. No, they can. And they'll, they'll fight you tooth and nail both sides. Exactly. Yes, exactly. They can't have it both ways. They try to, but they can't have it both. Either the baby is a non-entity that has no protection under the law, or it does have protection under the law. That's right. They can't have it both ways. You cannot, in other words, you cannot prosecute a man for causing a premature birth, which ends in a death of a woman by assault or something like that. How are you going to prosecute him for that if you turn around and say abortion's legal and any time the woman chooses, she can abort the baby? Right. Either the baby is protected under the law or it's not. And it ought to be protected under the law. Tell me something. What's it ever done to you? Think of 52 million of them right now if you lined them all up. Population of all of Scandinavia plus 12 million. Think about it. Think of all those little babies' faces right now. Where did they go? What happened to them? Do you think that they were born like dogs and cats and just died and buried their body? Or do you think that they're going to show up somewhere later? I mean, is it all a mistake? Is it, is it all just a bunch of biological nothing? Think about it. A birth, a, I mean, a, an impregnation of a, of, a, of a female? Do you think an impregnation of a female is just a biological thing and no consequences at all? Or do you think there's something really going on when the human being begins to take form inside a, uh, inside a woman's womb? You better believe there's something going on there. Amen. Could it be that uh, since a nation has embraced that that it could easily embrace sodomy and that it could embrace euthanasia and that it, can, that it could embrace some horrendous things on down the line? Could it be that there's some things on down the line that would literally blow your mind? Do you realize that under Obamacare that folks my age, you get to a certain point in life to where, you know, you really don't count that much. We don't, don't know if we can afford to fix you or not. We need to focus our attention on younger people. Oh yeah, that's the way it works. That's the way it works. Oh yeah, I'm not kidding you. They call them the death squads or the death panels or what have you. And the liberals come along and say, that's not true. Yes, it is true. Yes, it is true. Remember Nancy Pelosi's bill said, let's vote on it, and then we'll find out what's in it. I wish I could go somewhere and push a button and vote her out, wouldn't you? I wish I could <laughs> and just go back to California. <laughs> hey, Amen. Well, I know one thing you can count on. If I'm alive, I'm breathing in November, I'm going to be standing tall at the voting booth. I'm going to be at the voting booth. 
because I know I've got a moral obligation to Almighty God. If I listen, you're not going to put a Republican candidate in office as the pastor of America. Right. Newt Gingrich is not going in there to preach to us. Right. Nobody's voting. If you voted for him, you're not voting. Say, well, I agree of every, I approve of everything Newt oh. Gingrich has ever done. No, what you're doing is saying, all right, you said you're going to do this about this. You're going to do this. You're going to do this. I'm going to hold you to it. Do it, and put him in office. If he's the one, if he's the nominee, I have a personal preference. Personally, I prefer Gingrich over Romney. He said he got right with God. He's, he's a Roman Catholic, but you can be a Catholic and go to heaven. I know Baptists aren't going to go to heaven. I know a few of them. <laughs> Catholic or Baptist got nothing to do with it. Well, you've been born again. If you get your heart right with God. And, uh, and Gingrich said he got right with God. He said, I was wrong. He said, I, you know, he confessed, said he was wrong. I know a lot of people that never, don't know what it means to confess. That's a good sign when somebody starts confessing, when they start talking about how wrong they are. That's a good sign because it's a sign the Holy Spirit's working on them. There's a lot of garbage goes on in the Catholic Church I don't like, but there's a lot of garbage that goes on in the Baptist Church I don't like either. Amen. That's the truth, folks. Just like I'm talking to you tonight, we got Baptists all over this country that'll run straight in there now this coming November and they'll walk, walk right in there and they'll vote for Barack Obama. They'll do it. So-called evangelical born-again Christians will run straight in there and vote for him. If you confront them when they come out the door and say, you voted for Obama? Yeah, I did. He's good for the country. He'll give us jobs. What about all the babies he's killing? How do you feel about that? And not only that, he's not giving you jobs. I read a thing today that said the real unemployment rate in this nation is at least 10%. At least 10%. And a Gallup poll just came out today, and that Gallup poll was a nationwide Gallup poll, and it said that it looks real bad for Barack Obama. Hallelujah. I hope it gets so bad for Barack Obama that Popeye could go in. <laughs> I really do. Give him a can of spinach and let him eat. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, I'd like to be raptured out too, brother. I really would. I'd like to be raptured out, but I'd like to do something for unborn babies before I do. You got to keep the word out. You got to keep people educated. You got to keep them informed. You got to keep them. You got to keep them. You got to keep them on the edge of it. They got to be conscious of it. They got to know that when you walk into that voting booth, you have a moral imperative. You've got a responsibility in the sight of God. You can, I, you know, every booth I've ever been in, you you close uh, this curtain and you go in there in private. Well, you ain't in private. <laughs> the Holy Ghost is standing right there next to you. <laughs> watching everything you do. Isn't it amazing? This is 2012 and the little babies, unborn babies are paying for this culture. They're paying for sin. Are they not? They're paying for it. I don't want to have to look at their little faces and we will see their faces, folks. I believe those little babies Amen. will be in heaven. A vast sea that were never born Lord, help us at those who are responsible for killing them and what they're going to have to see. Yes, sir. I've been Barack Obama in Wikipedia. And look at how many people he's pardoned in criminal justice. Oh, he's, what he's done as far as the pardons. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it amazes me at how selective they are in their justice. They're very selective. Uh, you know, some of the things, I mean, you can get off into stuff like this tonight and get real sticky with it, but, but the truth of the matter is tomorrow Eric Holder goes before a House committee. Daryl Issa, which is a uh, representative from the state of California, has already told Daryl, has already told uh, Eric Holder, who is the Attorney General, head of the Department of Justice, he has already told him that if they do not produce the documents that that investigative committee is asking for, that he Issa will hold uh, Eric Holder in contempt of Congress. Now that's strong. That's that, strong. That guy in Georgia, because there's a big lawsuit in Georgia. Now the lawsuit in Georgia has to do with Obama's qualifications to be the president. Right. And the judge 
that dealt with that. He called the attorneys back. They went back in the back. They met back there for about 20 minutes, came back out, and he let the attorneys present their cases. And what he did by doing that was allow all this to go on the court record. And when it went on the court record, it became public knowledge, which means that Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Michigan, uh, you know, Wisconsin, the whole nation, any, any state that wants to look at that, it's there. And it's just amazing at the material that was brought out about Obama. Amazing at the material. One argued plainly that both parents, mother and father, must be, uh, must be citizens of the United States of America in order for their child to be natural born. And they have proven that Obama's father was not a citizen. And they've raised quite an issue there. And according to the Constitution, his mother and his father, now his mother was, but his mother and his father both had to be a citizen of the United States, and they weren't, and, and his father wasn't. But a lot of other issues, a lot of other things that have to do with his records in college, how all of this secrecy that, that in the past, you can't find anything about Obama, where he went and all this stuff, it just doesn't exist. They have testimony from experts in Photoshop that say that the birth certificate that he presented online, this so-called long form certificate is layered. Now anybody knows anything about Photoshop knows immediately what a layer is. That means that it was doctored, it was changed, it was altered. His social security number was issued to somebody uh, it, uh, in another state that he's never even been in a long time ago. And that, uh, he, it was issued to somebody who's born in 1883, I think it was. Somewhere, somewhere back in there, that same Social Security number that Obama's got. A lot of stuff, a lot of red flags. All that's going on right now in Georgia. And that judge down there, of course, apparently has the authority to say, all right, Mr. Obama, you don't have to show up in my court. You can stick your nose up if you want to, but your name won't be on the ballot in the state of Georgia. Now that is heavy duty. <laughs> that means he's already lost Georgia. And if the other states do the same thing, there you go. But here's the thing with Daralissa. Daralissa is a representative of the state of California, and he's the head of this thing over Fast and Furious. They're trying to investigate, and they've been stonewalling ever since they started. The man that was killed down there on the border, the border agent, his family just filed a $25 million lawsuit against the, the uh, BATF. And by doing that, they're going to force the information to be brought out. $25 million is a lot, of do a lot of money. Somebody's going to have to defend the Justice Department and the BATF. And so, and so the Attorney General tomorrow is going to sit before this council with Daryl Issa. And this old boy's good, Issa is. He's digging into it. He knows they're covering up. Because one of the high ends in this thing took the Fifth Amendment the other day and says, I take the Fifth. I will not testify. What does that tell you? Immediately, it, it says to Issa, he's covering up something. So he won't stop until he gets to the bottom of it. And he's already told Eric Holder, he says, you show up with these documents or you are in contempt of Congress. And I wouldn't want to be in contempt of Congress. Wouldn't want to be in contempt of Congress. All he has to say to the FBI is, put him in handcuffs. <laughs> Lock him up. And the Attorney General gets locked up. That could happen. They get to the bottom of it, find out what's going on. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be horrible if they kicked the president out and it went all the way to the top? You remember Nixon <laughs> when he got on that, uh, when he got on that uh, helicopter and he was leaving? He threw those hands. Uh, you remember that? Is that what he did? Both hands or one? I forget which one it was. Both of them. <laughs> he said, I'm not a crook. <laughs> and threw those hands out. And all that was over Watergate. You know, he had a little crew broke into Watergate and the Democrat convention tried to find some stuff, dig up some dirt and what have you, but it cost him. Out he went. They're guilty. It could be God answering prayer. It could be a lot of good Christian people have been praying to the Lord God, Lord, give us a leader in this country. We need somebody. And if they can't do it at the polls, they'll do it with the Daryl Issa. Pray for Issa. Pray for him. God, give him wisdom. Dig right to the bottom of it and find the incriminating evidence he needs. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, use what I've said tonight, Lord. I've spoke the truth. I've spoken my heart. Help the people that have heard it to go out and be as the Brians did. Search the scriptures and go check the facts and see if these things are true. In thy name we pray. Amen.